Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Tao Li. I'm currently an associate professor at the University of Cincinnati. Uh, the work presented here was actually done at the uh, University of Michigan uh, when I was working with uh, Professor Yogesh Ganchandani and uh, our PhD student Pasadada. Uh, unfortunately, uh, um, despite his excellent work, uh, Pasa cannot make to the conference due to mysterious uh, visa delay. So I was uh, filling in uh, with uh, short planning, so forgive me if I miss any uh, details. Uh, the work I'm talking about today is actually uh, a sensing microsystem intended for the high resolution uh, pressure gradient measurements um, um, for the uh, cold flood uh, experiments, uh, which is a routine procedure uh, performed uh, in the oil company laboratories as well as uh, other uh, ge geology, hydrogeology, and uh, um, uh, petroleum engineering research labs. Uh, basically, in this kind of uh, um, uh, experiments, uh, the fluid flow is uh, forced uh, through a, a cylindrical uh, shaped rock core which induce, in, introduces uh, small pressure gradients along its length uh, which provide information on the uh, permeability of the rock. Uh, the rock core is usually under uh, the ambient conditions at high temperature and high pressure which emulates the uh, downhole underground uh, conditions and the deeper the depth, the higher the temperature and the pressure. Uh, if you actually take the multiple uh, rock cores from different geological locations, you can potentially generate a mapping of the underground gas and oil uh, uh, reservoir. Uh, currently, the uh, uh, industry uses the X-ray uh, computed thermography uh, or CT scan to uh, uh, record the uh, fluid saturation information and the, uh, calculate the uh, rock porosity information uh, indirectly. Uh, basically, the measurement is done ex situ, and also the uh, uh, measurement is very expensive and uh, use a very large uh, setup. Whoops, uh, use a very large uh, setup as shown in uh, this photo here, which the size is basically decided by the CT scanner. Um, so the uh, this actually slide shows our uh, concept and the uh, uh, target of our uh, system. Uh, as shown in this uh, figure here, uh, the rock core, the cylindric rock core, is wrapped on the sidewalls uh, with a polymer sheets that's showing in the black color, and the, for, uh, the flow is forced through its two ends. Um, the flow can be actually synthetic oil or brine with a salinity of 8%. Uh, for comparison, seawater is 3%, and or uh, you can also use the gas flow. Um, Within these uh, uh, polymer sheets, we have the low pressure chamber, which is called the LP chamber, has a pressure up to uh, 20 bar. And the outside the uh, polymer sheets, uh, the oil bath is used to uh, apply a very high temperature and pressure, temperature up to 125 degrees Celsius and pressure up to 250 bar or 25 megapascal uh, to uh, put the rock core under condition of the downhole environment. Uh, for our uh, sensing system, we have uh, four sensors in this implementation. Uh, the sensors are lo located at the surface of the rock core uh, within the polymer sheets. And the location of the sensor is determined so that it's not going to disturb the flow inside the polymer sheets uh, uh, and avoid creating any undesired flow on the surface of the rock core. Uh, there's also a need for the phase through to go through the polymer sheets to connect the sensor to the uh, flexible PCB which house the, uh, the readout electronics for the sensor. Uh, the phase through basically needs to go through a, a, a pressure difference of about 230 uh, bar here. Uh, the flexible PCB is then connected to a, a readout unit on the outside of, a, uh, of the test cell uh, through another phase through on the exterior wall, uh, which is basically a Raspberry Pi a computer unit. And this computer unit actually read out and record the data and forward to a, a remote computer through Wi-Fi connection for, uh, for the uh, user interface. So our measurement target is actually 0.1 minibar out of a dynamic range of uh, 20 bar, so on the order of uh, 0.1 minibar. So that's a resolution on the order of uh, about uh, 16 bit. Uh, this shows our uh, uh, circuit schematic. We have uh, four uh, micro machine pressure sensor commercially uh, obtained from Murata. 
uh, has a dynamic range of 25 bar. Uh, custom sensors can also be used. Uh, we use uh, four capacitance to digital converter from analog devices, uh, which are located on the backbone of the uh, commercially uh, fabricated uh, flexible PCB. Uh, there are four uh, lateral tabs on the side of the uh, backbone of the PCB. At the tip of each tab, we have uh, one pressure sensor and one uh, reference capacitor, and reference capacitor used to provide the uh, temperature uh, ca calibration for the high temperature operation, as well as uh, to uh, calibrate any common mode um, uh, artifacts. Uh, this, this slide shows our uh, uh, phase through uh, between the LP and the HP chamber. This is a critical design because it has to uh, go across the 230 bar pressure difference and provide good seal, um, uh, allow the sensor to connect to the readout circuits electronically and also uh, orient the sensor in the right uh, angle to mirror the pressure uh, in the low pressure chamber. Uh, so what we do is that the side tab, uh, uh, the lateral tab of the uh, flexible PCB is bent using uh, 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 mounted onto a 3D printed plug, uh, which goes into a, a steel bolt uh, mounted on the polymer sheets. Uh, this 3D plug uh, orient the tip of the uh, flexible PCB uh, tab uh, so that the sensor diaphragm is facing the low pressure chamber. And the inside of the uh, 3D printed plug is filled with epoxy for sealing. And finally, a uh, rigid cover plate is uh, applied on the high pressure chamber side, HP chamber side, to isolate the high pressure from this side. Um, this shows more photos of the freeze through assembly. This is a photo of the polymer sheets with multiple uh, steel lots, which is used to uh, mate with the steel uh, bolt. Uh, and we have the uh, 3D printed plugs, and uh, the plugs are assembled with uh, uh, lateral tabs of the PCB with the sensor facing upward. And with the sensor and the uh, 3D plug is inserted into a hole on the uh, uh, 3D uh, on the steel bolt, and then the finally the application of the uh, uh, cover plate. Um, so we did the temperature tip, uh, uh, characterization of the system, and we found that uh, uh, even with uh, low pressure applied, uh, low, uh, low pressure change applied, uh, there is a temperature dependence of the system output that can be very significant, uh, as shown in this plot. Uh, this is basically the, uh, the black and the gray line shows the temperature versus time. Uh, went up to about 125 degrees Celsius, and then the other uh, color lines shows the uh, uh, delta C, the capacitance change of each of the sensor. Uh, you can see that channel one actually has a delta C of about six picofarad, although the pressure is actually zero during this test. Uh, pressure change is zero during this test. So this actually is caused only by the temperature and uh, is actually uh, um, uh, traced back to the uh, residual stress that's present in the solder joint uh, in the, uh, between the sensor uh, pads and the flexible PCB pads. Uh, we also did the uh, final element analysis uh, using the console metaphysics, which confirmed that the presence of the residue stress in the solder joints caused uh, uh, stress on the perimeter of the diaphragm, which significantly affects the uh, sensor uh, performance. So to address this issue, uh, we used the custom uh, developed uh, annealing protocol, basically by heating up the flexible PCB up to about 170 degrees Celsius and hold there for about five hours, uh, which is referred to as an annealton, and then slowly cool down to room temperature. Uh, this is a, a similar plot from the one on the previous slide. Uh, temperature still goes up to about 125 degrees Celsius, but you can see that uh, all the uh, uh, sensor uh, data say the thermal response uh, response to only to temperature change has dropped significantly down from uh, 8 picofarad uh, up to eight, uh, 6 picofarad down to about 0 0.4, 0 0.5, which is very similar to the thermal response of the uh, reference capacitor. So that means uh, uh, this, this leftover uh, thermal response is mainly caused by um, our readout circuits now. Uh, this is also evident from the plot on the right. Uh, uh, shows the difference between the um, sensor delta C and the uh, um, uh, reference capacitor delta C. Uh, 
with a function of different annealton. At zero annealton, we have this larger amount of uh, difference between these two. And then when you go have uh, annealton more than about five hours, the difference become more, almost uh, ba basically zero, uh, indicating that the anneal has actually uh, addressed all the, uh, mitigated all the um, uh, uh, thermal response caused by the, uh, the residual stress in the solar joint. We also did the uh, static pressure test uh, for the sensor, uh, basically put the micro system in the gas chamber and apply the pressure uh, to mirror its response as shown in this plot, the delta C as a function of the pressure. Uh, all four channels provide very consistent and uh, overlapping uh, response uh, at different pressure up to about uh, 20 bar, uh, which is about 300 psi. Uh, the reference capacitor response is also uh, staying at zero because there's no temperature change in this test. Um, we developed a custom built uh, test setup for the uh, preliminary dis uh, distributed pressure test with a flow. Uh, this is basically illustrated here. Well, we use a syringe pump uh, to drive a flow along this path. Along the path, we have uh, uh, four test capsules uh, as shown here in this photo. Uh, this test capsule basically allows the integration of the sensor inside the uh, 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 test capsule to pick up the pressure uh, at this point of the uh, flow pass. Integration approach is using the same as we intended for the actual uh, cold flood experiment setup. And then we have uh, three uh, check valves uh, in between the four sensors uh, to introduce uh, controlled pressure difference between the sensors. Um, and finally, we have the uh, pressure gauge for provide the reference, and we use uh, white uh, mineral oil as a test fluid. Uh, here's the uh, preliminary test result using this custom setup. Uh, on the, uh, basically, we use the check valve one and two, which is uh, uh, on the upper string of the flow, um, with a very small pressure drop at 6.2 minibar at 25 milliliter per milli flow rate, and then 146 minibar, which is a large drop uh, for the last uh, check valve at the same flow rate. Uh, in the left figure, you see that the red line shows the flow rate uh, over time, and we actually start with uh, 25 milliliter per minute and drop down to about five uh, at about 90 seconds. And the dashed lines in this plot shows the theoretical bound of the uh, uh, pressure measurements, and the solid lines shows the actual pressure readout from the four channels. As you can see, uh, there are three, the, the three channels, uh, one and two and three, actually they give uh, uh, higher uh, pressure levels and close to each other. That means there are actually smaller pressure drops between them. And then the last channel shows a much lower uh, pressure and with a large difference between the, uh, between the other channel. So this actually is consistent with our selection of the check valve configuration. Uh, on the right figure, uh, we're showing the uh, pressure difference between the channels. Uh, again, uh, the dashed line are the theoretical bounds. And this, for example, this uh, light green line shows the uh, difference between the w first and the fourth channel, which is the highest amount of uh, pressure difference. And the others are uh, at different levels and much lower. Uh, these also are consistent with our check valve configuration. Uh, so, as a conclusion, uh, we have uh, in this uh, paper presented a high resolution distributed pressure measurement system for co flood experiments. And we have developed a phase through technique that actually allows the uh, uh, phase through between uh, a pressure difference of 230 bar at a temperature up to 125 degrees Celsius. And we also uh, have uh, categorized the uh, post package stress and its impact on the performance of the pressure sensor and use a custom technique for anneal to mitigate this. Uh, the system was successfully tested in our uh, customized test setup, verifying the validity of the design and uh, the feasibility of the implementation. As a matter of fact, we have also tested the set system uh, with uh, actual core flood uh, experiment set up at the company side, but uh, we're not yet allowed to uh, talk about that. Uh, so uh, for future work, we are looking at uh, uh, further system noise limits and uh, uh, high temperature performance uh, of the system uh, and also uh, deployment of the system for long duration of the core flood experiments. 
uh, that's uh, all, all of my slides. I would like to thank the Total, Total, Total SF France, uh, which is a major oil company in France, uh, for the sponsor, uh, for, the, uh, uh, for support of this work, and also uh, Mr. Uh, John uh, Richard, uh, all thanks, um, uh, Varas La uh, at Total for guidance and support. Uh, also, their uh, work was performed at the University of Michigan and uh, travel grant from uh, that kind of graduate school, although unfortunately the student couldn't use it. <laughs> uh, that's all my uh, talk. Thank you.